ladies and gentlemen. The Kids in the Room Podcast. The Kids in the Room Podcast. That's right. That's right. Brought to you by Moo Faces TV. Woo! All right, all right, all right. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Kids in the Room Podcast. Today, we've got Laura Van Arwigan. Did, did I say that right? I might have butchered that yeah, a yeah. little bit. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it's correct. It's fine. All right, cool. So, you know, um, yeah. So, welcome to the show. And... Yeah, what's special about you? Um, you know, what do you do? Let's uh, let's dig into it. Laura? Okay, well, uh, thank you. Firstly, thank you for having me. Um, well, um, yeah, so I'm called Laura. I run a B2B lead generation company called Zen Outreach. Um, so, yeah, I guess um, who I am, uh, I'm Belgian, uh, currently located in Cyprus. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Wow. You're in Cyprus. Yes. That's pretty amazing. That's amazing. So what about, so, 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 you know, what's, what's spectacular about your company and things like that? Cause you, you were talking a little bit off air and we were speaking and you were telling me about your company, your company's called Zen Outreach. Correct. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was explaining, uh, we started where well, I launched it about uh, a year ago in uh, January this year. So we are almost uh, first year anniversary um so what's special about it uh well maybe to give a bit um an introduction to the company um well i am the only founder i didn't i don't have a co-founder so um yeah and it was launched uh during this pandemic time um uh, like um online business so i i guess that's a bit special about it i would say okay yeah cool so pretty much you've you you're the sole founder of a company um and your company does what again um so we offer lead generation services uh, to agencies mainly um so basically we have two different plans we offer list building so we send uh, to the clients a uh, monthly a list of leads uh, based on the um target clients and all we another service that we offer is uh, the done for you solution which is our email outreach package so we look for the leads, um, draft the message sequence, and then uh, we contact those leads via email. Wow. Wow. So how long have you been doing this so far? Um, so under Zen Outreach, I've been doing this uh, for about a year now uh, since the company was launched. And uh, I have experience in sales as I worked for a sales manager before uh, for um, an e-commerce service company. And uh, before that, well, to, it's totally different what I did. I used to co-found um, real estate agency. Oh, what? wait, yeah. what you did? So before you were in real estate and you switched to founding a company. Why? What happened? Yeah. So my journey, I would say, career was is a bit, um, a bit special. Uh, I studied law. I have my master in laws. So when I was uh, in law school in the Netherlands, I co-founded a real estate company. Uh, we were focusing on rentals only for about five or six years. And then, um, then I focused on um, working in the law sector, then uh, sales and came back to uh, founding my own company, another type of company. Wow. That's, yeah, that, that's, so that's, that's, that's interesting, Laura. I mean... You, you you were you were you're studying law, then you went over yeah. to lead generation. Like why? Yeah. Why'd you why'd you leave law for lead generation? Um so I never worked in a law firm or anything. I worked more uh, in NGOs. Um I worked in uh, Uganda mainly uh, in an NGO as a legal consultant. Uh, why did I leave? Uh, well, I realized that the NGO world was not for me. I like, um, it's interesting. You learn a lot, but I like more, um, well, um, the profit side of, uh, life and, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, that's why I, I don't know. My journey led me to, to do, to, to start a lead generation company. There's no, um, because I saw a need also, like uh, any um, business owner needs clients. So that's how the idea came up as well, uh, that there was a need, people need clients, well, companies need clients. So I wanted to fulfill that need. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's how the idea came up actually. Laura, Laura, But there's Laura. no, 
particular reason of living really uh, low, I was like, okay, let's live low and go to sales. No, it's just, I don't know, life drives you somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it drives you for sure. It's like a Tesla yeah. automatic drive. Yeah. <laughs> Autonomous <laughs> vehicles. Yeah. I don't know. That's crazy. So right now, and, and are you, are you, you said you're not from Cyprus or are you from Cyprus? No, I'm from Belgium. You're from Belgium. So you yeah. were in Belgium and now you're in Cyprus? Um, Is that correct? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah correct. So uh, I'm from Belgium, but I studied in the Netherlands. Then um, I moved to Uganda in East Africa. Uh, then uh, I traveled a bit around and uh, decided to come to Cyprus. Yeah. Wow. Wait a minute. So wait. So you were in yeah, Uganda. Yeah. What were you doing in Uganda? Yeah. Cyprus, Uganda, Netherlands, what's going on? Um, so in the Netherlands, as I said, I was doing my studies. And uh, at the same time, I was uh, co-founding the real estate company um, during my studies. And I worked for it a bit longer after when I, was I graduated. Um, then actually, we decided to stop the real estate because the law changed in the Netherlands. So it was not in our favor to continue. Um, then I got a job in Uganda as a legal consultant. So I went there, uh, worked there. And then, um, well, I um, traveled around on the African continent and decided uh, to move to Cyprus to be uh, closer to home and so on. Yeah. And, you know, the pandemic um, made me think, where do I want to be? And uh, Cyprus was uh, quite free. So that's why I decided to come here. When you say it's quite free, what do you mean by that? What's free about Cyprus? Um, well, they are less strict in terms of uh, lockdown rules and so on. Um, yeah, so I thought it was, uh, yeah. And also it's close to home. I can fly uh, easily to see family and so on. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah, that's wild. So you, you moved to Cyprus because of COVID. So like what, what, what's COVID restrictions like in the Netherlands or Belgium? Uh, in Belgium, I, uh, honestly, I stopped following a bit all those rules <laughs> at some point because it's giving you a headache, but I know in Belgium, <laughs> they are going back on lockdown now, um, school are closing and so on. So, um, yeah, also they have uh, many rules in terms of, uh, sorry, people who are not vaccinated cannot enter uh, like malls or, um, gatherings and all that stuff, uh, which I think is becoming a common rule everywhere actually. Uh, in Cyprus, um, well, you're basically free. There's not uh, just wearing the mask uh, inside, like malls, etc. Uh, there's no curfew. Um, yeah, I hope they won't go back on lockdown, but yeah. Wow. So did you move to, so you moved there, so you were, right, you moved there during COVID or like right after COVID? Um, so actually I was, um, okay, right before COVID, I was in South Africa and I moved uh, to the Philippines. So during, wait, I reached the flip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me so, more. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I was in South Africa. I decided to move to the Philippines there. I was working, um, as a sales manager remotely during that time. And that's when the pandemic hit. Um, for personal reason, I had to stay in the Philippines and wait, I was waiting for uh, maybe COVID to, to, um, to decrease or like the measures to become a bit more flexible, but it didn't. So I looked where is best for me to go and I decided to come to Cyprus and Cyprus. I've been here for about uh, two months now, something like that. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what a journey. So yeah. did you travel, you traveled to all these countries by yourself? You just went from country to country by I'm yourself? With, I'm, I'm with my partner. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So you, you did travel yeah, with yeah. someone else. Okay. That's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I'm with my partner. Okay. Cause that would sound kind of like, I don't know. That sounds pretty, uh, uh, brave to just like pop to different countries by yourself. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. No, 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 no. I was COVID? with my partner. Yeah. Okay. This well, is I good. That is good. Uh, yeah, at least we know you were kind of safe going from country to country. So, you, yeah. so you did you 
you when did you actually start start the company? Did you start the company while you were in Cyprus or when you were in Philippines or Uganda or exactly? Because I lost a little bit of track of all the hopping. So while I was in the Philippines still, I started. Mm. Yeah. Okay. When you were in actually Philippines, you actually started the company. And so right yes. now you're the sole founder and yes. kind of what's your what's your goal with the company? Are you trying to like raise capital or what are you trying to do? Um, well, for now, um, I would like the company to grow, to be honest. Um, this, like, yeah, the goal is to grow. Um, I'm not sure what is the big end goal to, to I, I guess, to be successful for the company would be very nice. Um, yeah. What does success, what does success mean to you? What success means to me, um, well, I guess I would see the company as having, uh, like, uh, yeah, a few employees and, um, like, maybe selling the company one day. Um, yeah, that would be success to me. Cool. That That's interesting. And does your partner do the same thing as you do? Is there, like, how do you, because you said you're a sole founder. You have no extra yes. help? Um, no. So I'm the sole founder of the company. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just you. You're just doing yeah. it. So what does that look like? What it, what it, what does it look like a, a you know a whole week when you're you know you're starting out working at your company? Um. So well, we are all remote. Firstly, uh, my team is uh, they are located in Eastern Europe. Um. So we communicate uh, via um, well online means. Um. What it looks like, well, uh, I guess waking up early and starting early and sometimes, you know, as a founder, you finish late, uh, not really the time you would like. They always say you become uh, self-employed because you hit the nine to five, but you end up doing 24 seven. So, yeah, <laughs> bit the case. Um, so, um, yeah, what it looks like, uh, I don't know what else I can say in that regard. Yeah, yeah, that's no, that that makes yeah. sense. I just was kind of figuring out like what the what was your day to day, you know, looking like. Like you wake up, you start, you know, contacting people. Like that's what I think I was trying to dig into. Okay, sure. Um, so well, I have a team who um like a team who look uh, for the leads mainly. So um, they take care of that. Uh, I I am trying to find um, more employees, but it's a bit a challenge that I'm having at the I find myself a bit too involved in the day-to-day -day, um, business and um, I would like to be more um, doing other tasks such as uh, marketing or um, like focusing on sales and marketing mainly and not really to be in the day-to-day -day, uh, business. But I find that part a bit challenging as, um, well, lead generation, if you look at it, you need employees. It can't be done by yourself because it's a lot of work to look for leads, to, to, to manage the campaign. The campaign, sorry, to uh, supervise everything, it can be done with a one, like one person. Um, but I find it challenging um, to find, um, like, um, I don't like to say that, but good employees. Uh, meaning, I'm looking for people who are quite um, um, independent in their work, like they uh, can, um, because we are remote, so you need people who can a bit work by themselves and I can't, it's not like you're in an office and you can be a bit more behind. It's a bit easier to do that. Here you have to supervise online. So yeah, um, I find that part a bit challenging at the moment. I would like to have someone who is a, like a project manager. Um, yeah. Yeah. And are you able to pay yourself right now? Like, what does it look like? You know, yeah. are, are you able? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I pay myself. Yeah. Oh, so you're profitable. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. That's crazy. Yeah. So now you've got this, this, this. You're, you're doing this thing, and you're looking for, you know, some other people to join the company. Um, yeah. Do you have enough money to actually hire someone right now? Being an early stage well, startup. That's that's the part where the challenge is. Of course, um, the uh, budget for hiring people is not as high as um, if. You, well, if you, um, it's not that high. So to get um, 
like uh, I don't like to say good employees because I believe everybody can be good, but um, the skills that someone's going to have for a high salary are different the skills that they have when they are requesting for if they are more like beginners and so on, you know. So, um, but since it's a remote job, I need someone who is quite um, like proactive in their work. And it's sometimes a bit difficult to find within the budget that I would have. Yeah. No, I get it. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, because you're probably yeah. dealing with people who, I don't know. I mean, have you tried like reaching out to like interns and stuff like that or? No, I have not done that uh, because in terms, I would like someone on the long run, um, someone we can like partner for, um, like if I find someone who fits, um, then we stay and we work together and we make this company grow, that would be the best. I would love that. In terms, they are going to be only available for a short period. So um, yeah, it wouldn't stay for the long run. Right. Totally makes sense. Wow. And so like, wow, that's, that is interesting. So like right now you're in Cyprus, you know, what does it look like to live in Cyprus building a startup? Like how is a startup community in Cyprus? Um, I think the startup community is there. Um, what does it look like? Well, since I work remote, most of the week uh, I work at home. Um, so I'm a lot at home, especially it's coming to winter now. So, uh, there's, um, people are mostly at home as well. Um, yeah, that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, that sounds cool. That definitely answers the question. All right. So like, I mean, I, I well, actually, no, maybe I was asking like, is, are there like, yeah. com, are there like a uh, startup communities and groups and stuff like that in Cyprus? Is there like any type of startup communities there? Or is it just like you two guys? you know, are just living there and there's not a, like a really a startup community or like, what does that look like? Oh, uh, yes, there is a startup community. Um, indeed, yeah, there is. So you can meet, uh, meet up people and so on. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. All right. So there is a startup community. There are people to help out with, I mean, to reach out to. Are you, yeah. and right now you're at the point to where you have, um, you're at the point where you have, uh, you know, some profit but you're, you're also looking yeah. to bring on other people. Have you reached out to the startup community and, you know, try to see if there's any resources that, you know, in Cyprus might be able to help you out? Um, I have not, to be honest, and that's a good idea. I could. Uh, I've mainly looked a bit by myself on, uh, like, online um, job bots kind of thing. Um, but that could be an idea. Yeah, yeah that's, I feel like you need somebody that has like that startup mindset, you know, cause you're looking for yeah. somebody with skills, right. But then you also yeah, look yeah. for somebody with the passion and drive. And so like that kind of person might be in, in, in you're also not talking about a large budget, right. Immediately. Right. So yeah. that type of person seems like you, you would probably need to find somebody who's interested in startups and, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and would be an asset towards your goals as a, a founder. Right. Yeah. Indeed, someone who would like to to grow with the company and see the company grow, and um, yeah, yeah. That what do you think? What do you, What do you think it's gonna like? What do you think like the the value of your uh, company can reach? Like, how how big do you think Zen Outreach can be in your mind? Um, well, I do think it can grow um, very big. I um. Yeah, indeed, there, because there is a demand. Like, as I said, um, I started the company because I knew there was a demand. Like, um, other companies need clients and sometimes it's, uh, well, difficult for them and that's why they reach out to us. But also because uh, outreach and lead generation is really time consuming for someone to do it. And the fact to, like, let's say if you have a, like, let's say an agency, you know, so clients are agencies. Uh, if you're an agency owner, maybe you don't want to, um, well, your time is more valuable than doing some outreach and just uh, looking lead by lead. So um, it's time consuming. But also if you would decide, okay, I could do it by myself. I'm going to look for um, an employee and uh, train him and let him um, do the job. Well, first you have to train that person. You have to supervise that person. You have to look uh, quality wise. It's important because um, there's a lot... Uh, 
you need to invest your time in uh, like in the um sorry like um doing outreach uh, first the most there are two important parts of it uh, it's the target are you targeting the like your the leads you are targeting are there within your target clients the way you target them um, is it the right uh, criteria and so on this is important but also the way you are going to reach out to them like how are you going to structure your messages um like yeah what are you uh, how are you going to construct them and so on is it uh, interesting to them do you address their pain point and so on don't make it all about you so all that all in all takes a lot of time it's time consuming and maybe um well i would say the founder of the company should uh, kind of see how does he value his time? Is it doing um, lead generation where he has to contact leads by leads or is it doing like um, other type of task? So um, yeah, I do think the company can grow because there is a demand and um, yeah, and that yeah, anybody needs, like any companies needs clients, so. Right, but how do you scale that? Like, how do you scale that to like with, without being so expensive, right? Because like, I mean, do you have like a strategy to be able to scale that? Like, how do you scale lead generation? How to, you know, how to prepare a proper email, you know, to help you get that that open rate and things like that? Like, how do you do that? How do you scale something like that? Um, well, um, to scale it, um well, basically, you need to, as I said, um, I would like to invest my time less in the day-to-day -day, um, uh, tasks and be able to focus more on marketing and sales uh, to get more clients, um, to be able to, well, get other employees as well. And because the more clients you get, the more employees you need, because finding leads, for example, takes a lot of time to ensure quality-wise. Uh, um, so yeah that's the tricky part though because yeah that's the tricky part <laughs> how do you do what you're doing to scale i think that would be like if i'm like an investor i would you know i think my biggest question or query would be like all right laura this sounds like a great idea i get it everybody needs this okay fine 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 yeah but how do we scale this idea you know without you know hiring these experts every single time because yeah and, and uh, keeping it cheap, right? Yeah, uh, indeed. Um, well, I would say in terms of the service. Um, or does it matter what, to scale it that much? Like, you know what I mean? Like, is it, is, is it trying, are you, are you focusing on being like more like a small business, you know, maybe making a million dollars a year or something like this? Or are you focused on being a large startup, you know, and doing an IPO and things like that? Like, I guess I'm trying to figure out like what is the range because like you can focus on, you know, not really scaling it so much and just focus on, you know, quality people being able to deliver, you know, but then, you know, it, it is, I, I find that it would be probably kind of limited at a certain point because you're, tr you, you have to curate each um, email and, you know, that can be like, that seems, that part seems hard to scale if you're going big, 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 big startup size. But if you're doing like a small business, you know, maybe make, maybe making like a million dollars a year or something like this, I could see it to be easy to be, to, to scale. Right. And unless, I don't yeah. know, that's tricky. What do you, what do you think? Tell me. Um, well, I think, um, um, the, f oh, you're, answer? um, you're on the I'm stage right now. You're ready. You've got this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, well, personally, how I see things would be first to try, um, like you said, to be like a stable business that is profitable and uh, incomes are secured and uh, re having recurring clients all the time and um, having stable income. So that's kind of the, my goal right now. Uh, I'm not sure how I see it in five years and so on, because, um, well, I'm not that type of person. I never looked like five years ahead because life can be so uh, full of surprise. So right now, yeah, I would like to have um, this business to be um, like stable and uh, having a good team. That's what I'm trying to build right now, honestly. And um, then we will see um, what comes up. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. That's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting, Laura. I just wonder like, you know, 
are you are you and i want to ask this question are, are you looking forward in the future for like funding or are you just planning on being uh bootstrapping the company um so for now bootstrapping i'm not really looking for funding at the moment uh but uh, let's see in the future um if the need is there um yeah no, why not but uh, right now it's bootstrapping Got it. So basically what I'm saying is like, you're, you're basically, from what I'm gathering is you're saying basically what you're kind of looking to do is to basically build a traditional business in some sense, um, but around lead generation and have it profit. And as long as you're making money, this is fine for you. you maybe you don't care about, you know, making billion dollars or something like this, or, you know, 500 million, you just care about just creating a company that's flexible and comfortable for you. That's profitable. Is that kind of fair? Or, or well, what? yeah, for now, I would say, of course, if it can scale and uh, make a lot of money, yeah, why not? But for now, um, I can't see, like, I mean, when you start a business, I, I don't know, maybe people do, but I would find it a bit, um, like, a bit um, unrealistic to see directly, okay, I'm going to make millions right away. No, first you need to make your business um like uh, stable and um, like having a good team, building your team um, with people who are happy to work for you and so on. And then uh, once you have that base, then you start and you can see uh, afterwards. So um, yeah, obviously I would love like anyone to make like millions and so on. But uh, right now um, the, the daily goal, I would say it's to focusing on uh, building the team, building the company. Um, and um, yeah, that's, um, that's that's the focus for now basically yeah right i mean i i, I totally get it i think where i was looking at it was like typically when you yeah. probably typically i don't know if how it works in cyprus or in the european era but typically when an investor is looking for you know an interesting prospect or you're looking for an investor would be more correct yeah. most likely you know they're usually looking for a founder who has you know a, a vision so they can make 10x so they're typically looking for startups who have, you know, hey, look, in five years, I think we can be here. Or they want they want a long-term vision of some sense. Maybe not 20 okay. years, but usually within five, five, five years or seven years of like, where do you plan on taking this company so they can make 10x or 20x? Because I think that's the biggest yeah. thing. If they, they're going to, they're going to most likely look at it as, is this going to be a big business or is this like a small yeah. business? And that is a big key differentiator of needing most of the time decent sized funding, right? From a reputable yeah. Uh, investor. Yeah. So. Well, uh, well, I don't know. I didn't plan to pitch for an investor right now. So um, I can't really answer that one now. Um, not like I can answer that. Um, like if we. Yeah. That's it. That's, that's I would have to start with that one. Okay. Uh, wait, I didn't hear you for a second. Sorry. What'd you say? <laughs> uh, sorry. Sorry. I was saying, um, well, uh, to answer the question about pitching to an investor, um, well, I can't answer right away like this. Um, like I didn't prepare to pitch for an investor right now, tonight. Um, but... Um, yeah, how do I see the company? Obviously, I want to take it the furthest it can go. Uh, but right now, in terms of day-to-day uh, -day, uh, tasks, what I'm trying to do is um, um, to build the team, to have uh, a, a good team who is happy to work uh, with me, for me. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do. And um, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes... What you're saying makes 100% sense to me, and there's no problem at yeah. all. And I think nobody can find a problem at all at what you're saying and what your goals are. I think the thing yeah. is, is when you start putting the, when you start putting the, um, this kind of like startup kind of like thing into it, it sounds more yeah. like usually most of the time we have a stereotype. This is not correct because anything can be a startup, right? Anytime you're starting a company, you're starting up, right? But I think a lot of times yeah. when people typically think of startups these days, they think of, you know, companies that are looking for funding and want a 10 X, you know, on their investment okay. and they, yeah. everybody knows, right. That 
you're not going to reach that goal immediately. And everybody knows, investors know, if you're looking for that type of lifestyle, that you're not going to guarantee make this, right? But they want to, yeah. they look for typically founders who have a goal to scale and who have a vision. They don't really, they most likely know that you're going to fail. This is mostly what they're looking at. Oh, you're probably going to fail, but just convince me that this is a worthwhile investment of my money. So if I okay. lose it, I believe in what you're kind of saying and that you have some vision. The scary part is, yeah. is if they come to you and you're like, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't really think about it so far. I just want to first figure out money and things like that. That's fine. But that also is a yeah. point where it looks like to them that you're not really looking for investors maybe in the near future um, with, okay. what, with what you're saying now. Now it feels like if I'm an investor on the other side, it feels like you just want to build like a company, make some profit. And if something happens, then okay. Well, just because um, I didn't know I'm pitching for investors right now. So that's it. Ah, I got you. No, 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 no. Yeah. And, and, and so not I didn't, I, I'm guessing when you pitch for an investor, you kind of plan it. And here I didn't know. Well, no, no, no. You're I'm not pitching. You're not pitching in for an investor right now. There's nobody. Well, I yeah. mean, there may be some people on here that I know might be investors. But yeah, I'm just but... saying, you know, when, when we're thinking about the structure and the vision. And so everyone can understand what you're trying to do and articulate that they might want to understand, yeah. you know, to the level, for example, if there's other investors listening here, they might want to understand what you're trying to do. What is your goal? And like, where are you at right now? And, and, you know, is it a, is it a startup, 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 or is it just like, you know, more of a startup, small business type of thing. And to clearly let the audience and people understand that they're going to probably, yeah those who do understand it are going to probably go ahead and think, well, what's going on with the story? So like, what is she trying to do? She's looking for funding or like, what is that? Like, cause people want to grow and learn from some conversations or some people might be interested in what you're doing and might want to be a part of it. You never know. So it's, sure. I think, I think what I'm trying to do is, is figure out where you're at. So the audience can understand where you're at and they can also learn from okay. you. Sure. You are the inspiration sure. person right now. <laughs> Sure. So um, I'm not looking for funding at the moment. Um, I'm looking to grow this company. Uh, and it, um, it's grown enough one day. Why not selling it? Um, that's what more I would be looking at. Um, but I'm not looking for funding at the moment. Right. So that's just pretty much clear. Right now, you're not really, yeah. you're not really building like us. You're just building a company that, you, you just, that you're passionate about. And if something happens later yeah. on and you decide to build... You, you decide you want to raise capital, then you start thinking like that then. But right now, yeah. you just want to build something, keep it profitable, have a little team, and see what happens, right? Well, and make the, like, yeah, make money with it and uh, grow something good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think. Clients are happy and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but that's building a, that's just building a company. Yeah. So, like, you're built, you're already building that. So, just building a company. Yeah. And versus like, I think, I think what I was trying to explain is like, or what I'm trying to like, make sure the audience and everybody understands what is the variance of, or scale level are you looking for on starting up a company? Because again, a lot of people, when you say startups, they automatically think startups like Facebook, Google, you know, companies mm -hmm. that had, yeah. they started up a little idea, but they had a vision that they wanted to grow it to be. 10x or 20x the size of what it was and so there was there was a strategy of course they still every company has to still you know structure it as all right first we need good employees we need a product you know we need to start doing mm -hmm. some things every company has those things that's common for any startup but i think yeah. morally what i'm saying is when people typically hear the word startup now maybe not 10 years ago or whatever but when people hear it now they think you're going to build the next Spotify or the next Google, or what are you trying to build? Like, they don't think morally like, cause it sounds closer to like right now, you want to build just a business, a small business that's profitable. And then if it, you feel like you want to get it bigger, then you will, you know, maybe bring in investors and things like that. More of a traditional style of building a company that has a service. Is that fair? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying. Yeah, you're just taking yeah. it. You're just cruising. You're taking it slow. You're just seeing what happens. If it happens, it happens. But right now, the whole goal is to profit and to build like a, a basic foundation for a company 
and that's just pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. So what do you do all the time in Cyprus? Like, what do you, what do you guys do out there? Like you're in Cyprus. What do you guys do? I mean, you, are you locked down or are you just swimming? What do you guys surfing? What do you guys do? What do you do for fun? Laura? Um, well, well, right now it's getting to winter, so it's a bit colder. Not like you really, um, the really hot, um, Belgian winter, I would say it's much, uh, it's nice but cold, so I'm uh, not really swimming or beach at the moment. Uh, w what do we do on, um, like, free time? Uh, I would say um, you can, well, I like to go hiking and stuff like that, so um, I do that over the weekend sometimes, not all the time. Or, like, meet up with friends, um, meeting new people, because we're actually new here, so uh, trying to see uh, who lives here and trying to meet new friends. Um, yeah, uh, but no, no. Well, I I guess you could go swim and all that, but it's too cold for me right now, especially coming from the Philippines where it's 40 degrees all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah. I, I, you know, but uh, honestly, I didn't think it would be cold in Cyprus, though. I thought it would be hot. It gets cold in Cyprus. Well, no, uh, sorry, I interrupted. Not that cold. I think it's around like... Um, Maybe it's me who find it very cold coming from the Philippines. I think it's around like 18, 17 degrees Celsius. Um, but yeah, as I said, coming from 40 degrees, it seems very cold. But right now in Belgium, there is snow. So yeah. That <laughs> is wild. That, that is wild. Yeah. So right now there's, so it's, it's the water's kind of cold is what you're basically saying. Yeah, yeah. So you, I haven't tested it, but I think so. You, you think so. All right. That's safe to say. The water is cold in Cyprus. Yeah. I just never would think that the water would be cold in Cyprus. You always think that Cyprus is like near the equator. So maybe it's hot all the time year round. No, I heard that summers are really hot, like uh, 40 plus. Uh, but yeah, I reach here now. So uh, I would see. Surprise. Wow. How long have you guys been there again? Uh, about two months now. Oh, you guys are fresh and you guys are brand new in the yeah, Cyprus. Yeah. Yeah. Totally missed that. Yeah, I need to take my ADD medication or something. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. So you guys have only been there for like two months and yes. in Cyprus. And how long do you guys plan on staying there? And how do you stay there, first of all? How do you, how do you stay in Cyprus? Like, doesn't your visa need to get extended? Like, how do you just go to a country and just stay there for a while? without going back to your, your homeland, yeah. Netherlands? Yeah. Um, so, well, Cyprus is a bit particular. I don't know if everybody is aware, but it's um, in the world, it's recognized as, um, as Europe, like it's the Republic of Cyprus. But now the northern side of it is uh, occupied by Turkey. Turkish. Yes. So, yeah. So um, it's a bit confusing, to be honest, uh, because... On the ground, me, I'm in the north part for the moment. Uh, I'm allowed to go any part because, um, well, I hold the European passport. So, uh, but I decided to uh, stay in the north part for now. Um, so you're on the can, Turkish side or the Greek Turkish side? side? Yes, ah. yes, Turkish side. But you can easily, as if you have, uh, if you are from the UK, I believe, or if you are, have a European passport, you can easily cross um, from one side to the other, no issue. Um, so to stay on, well, I think the rules are both the same, but uh, basically how we did it, uh, if you rent a house, um, you need to prove some type of incomes as well. You can have a visa uh, for one year, six months or one year, depending on uh, how much income you can prove. Um, so that's what I did basically uh, for now. Um, yeah, yeah. Just the situation is a bit funny because... Well, it's Europe for the rest of the world, but uh, here on the ground, it's really, um, they are Turkish Cypriots, so um, they don't believe they are Turkish, but uh, it's occupied by Turkey. Wait, they yeah. don't believe but they're Turkish? They, well, they are Turkish Cypriot, so they are Cypriot before being Turkish. Um, now they are Turkish people as well, depending. Um, depending. What but do they, don't, they don't see it as Europe. They have their own government, their own rules, and all that, which is different from the Greek side. Right, because it's 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 a Turkish settlement. Yes, right. Well, occupied by Turkey. Occupied yeah. by Turkey, right. Yeah. And there's yeah. a lot of Turkish people on that side. 
Um, well, yeah, I think it's uh, there. There are a lot of um, on that side. There are, it's it, there's really a lot of nationalities. To be honest, yeah. um, there are a lot of Turkish. There are Cypriots. Um, there are also people who come from the Greek side and work in the Turkish side. So they live on the Greek side, cross and come to work this side. Um, yeah. What's so the, it's interesting. You can meet a lot of people. What's the kind of re- most of religion in that side where you are? Is most everybody uh, Muslim or is like, what is it? I think, I yeah, it's Muslim mainly. Right. It's Turkish. Yeah. 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 But now there is, there are a lot of nationalities. So I think there are a lot of like Orthodox as well. Auto Turks? Orthodox. Um, oh, or- sure. Orthodox, Orthodox, Orthodox. Yeah, orthodox. orthodox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah you said it really fancy. Time. So I was like, ah, oh, what you said? Orthodox? I was like, oh, shit. The what? French accent, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, well, <laughs> but I got you. Orthodox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So do you speak Turkish? Do you guys speak Turkish out there? Or what, like, what's going on? Um, I don't speak it at all. People often often confuse me. Um, I guess the brown hair and uh, dark eyes <laughs> confuse me often. Yeah. Um, but no, we don't speak it at all. Um, the English, the English is it depends on the person. Some it's no English at all. Some they can um, discuss because they are used to a lot of tourists. Though it's a really touristic island, so um, they are used to that. Um, yeah, but no, we don't speak it for now. Yeah. I was in Turkey, um, recently for like two months. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I went out everywhere. I went to Ephesus, Mardin, Izmir, Istanbul, yeah. you name it. Cappadocia. It was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Just hanging out and having a good time. Tamam, tamam, tamam. Merhaba. Yeah. 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 How did you like it? It was good. It was good. It was great. I mean, there's so many different diverse places in Turkey. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people don't know, but there's so many different diverse places in Turkey and yeah. so much old and ancient culture. You have an overlap True. between um, uh, Muslim world and then you also have overlap of uh, Christian history um, yeah. and then also Greek history. You can find pretty much most of the most of like, you know, ancient history within I would say probably uh, Europe and Africa and Middle East, you can find some settlement right, of that right. in uh, Turkey. Ancient Mesopotamia, it's on near Mardin, so you can go see that. Um, there was yeah. a lot of ancient people that lived there. So, yeah, and I don't know if I said Lobeka Tepe. So those are, those are wild, these crazy big stones that were built a long time ago. You know, there's, in Cappadocia, there's, tunnels under the ground and things like that well near Cappadocia yeah there's like tunnels completely underground you go like maybe like um 80 feet down in the ground and there's tunnels where people used to live for a long period of time where they were Christians hiding from um different types of people who were nearby and they had rocks and stones and they were they had literally inside they had a uh, how do you call them? Uh, whales to like get water and stuff okay. deep in the, these tunnels. Like, how the hell do you do that? I don't even know how they did that, but they have it there. Like these people are living independently in the ground, like for a long time. Okay. And they had like, you know, animals and everything. They didn't have to go outside. They look like, look like people, um, ant farms, you know, ants. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 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 They look like, okay. look like an ants farms, like far in the ground. I was amazed that people, we're living there and they had ways to breathe. Yeah. Deep down in the ground, they put like little holes that would go very far up and they would allow them to yeah. breathe down there. So you couldn't pretty much kill them. They had all kinds of amazing ways to trap people when they came down there. So if someone tried to invade, they had a bunch of a magic ways to just get rid of you. But you have to do like this when you're getting in there because it's so okay. small. They yeah. were Maybe they were shorter. Maybe they weren't that tall back then. I don't know. But uh, I can't remember. But yeah, it's it's a pretty uh, amazing experience. And then they have like the hot air balloons, you know, where you just, yeah. I think everybody's seen those. That's that's near there. So that's pretty awesome. But overall, there's so many different diverse places and things to do in Turkey. And it's pretty amazing. So yeah, I think I was going to go to some of the uh, Greek islands, but I have yeah. got so busy and I went to so many different cities. I went to like 20 cities. So I was kind of tired. Yeah. yeah. I went to more places 
in Turkey than most Turkish people have ever went in their entire life. So I was everywhere and literally in the middle of nowhere, mountains, no electricity for miles, no gas. Somebody has to drive to get gas and come back the okay. next day. Like it was crazy. Yeah. There's big, there's like crazy mountains where you go to the top. There's uh, structures that are on the top of the mountain. I don't know how somebody did this, but there was people that did this a long time ago. There's just so much ancient history and overlap in Turkey. Um, I even went to, um, I'm not sure if you follow Christianity, but I went to um, uh, uh, Mary's um, last uh, recorded so-called house in Turkey. Okay. So Jesus and, I mean, Jesus' mom, Mary, and, and the father, Joseph, supposedly this is the last place where they lived. Um, okay. Yeah, so you can go there. They have the house there that's still there, um, and that's you can crazy. go inside. Yeah, it's crazy. You can see, like, pictures and stuff inside, and you can't take no photos when you go inside, but this yeah. stuff is still sitting there. A lot of history. Moses, you can go to another town. There's, like, where Moses was. He was born, and then also Abraham. He was born in a cave there. Um, there's so yeah. much history that is there. I mean, I don't know if yeah. you know about Santa Claus, you know, but even Sa I know Santa, Claus, Santa yeah. Claus was a Turkish guy. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was Turkish. I mean, this, this was a time when it wasn't Turkey, but it still yeah. was Turkey. Santa Claus was originally, um, he was a, uh, maybe a Byzantine or Greek kind of like overlap of guy. And he was okay. giving the presents. Um, he was giving, okay. he was helping out to poor people. Yeah. Santa Claus. Yeah. yeah. But that's where he's originally from. He's not even from Europe like that, you know? I mean, cause yeah. uh, you know, cause Turkey is, you know, considerably, I don't know. There's always this debate, mm -hmm. but it's, it's on, it's in the middle East. And then there's, a, there is the, uh, European side, this small little piece, yeah. but overall you would consider mostly Turkey on the Asian side. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of history there. You would definitely enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. You guys should check it out. You can definitely find yourself busy. I was there when it was like um, lockdown, right? So like lockdown, okay. lockdown was there for maybe like two weeks when I was there. And so okay. if you are a Westerner, you know, you can travel at the time you could travel anywhere as long as you have passport, okay. you know, um, but now it's open back normally. I think you still have to wear a mask, yeah. but then we got the new variant. So the, yeah. How's that working there in Cyprus right now? Are you guys prepping to get locked down again for that? Or like, what do you think is going to happen with that? Yeah, people are fearing that if uh, they would find some of that, um, like new case of the new variant, they might completely lock down directly. Um, I know um, they were on lockdown. I can't know exactly when, um, but they were on total lockdown at some point as well. Then they went to um, curf having a curfew. And now it's honestly fully free, except the masks that you have to wear. But really, um, it was a bit of a shock coming from the Philippines because the Philippines is very, very strict. People are um, scared a lot of the COVID, so they really respect the rules. And coming here, I really felt like... Um, gaining my freedom back really that's the first feeling i had like um, people do wear the mask but not that serious um mostly in shops or like big grocery shops and so on they would request but if you go to a smaller office nobody's wearing it people are much more relaxed um yeah so when philippines is completely different people are very um they are more afraid so they really listen and uh, wear at all time and uh, the face shield as well and uh, it's yeah, and it's a curfew everywhere, and it's quite strict. Um, so now it's quite relaxed, but people are saying, um, yeah, if they would find a case, as I said, for the new variant, they might uh, lock down the place again. But let's see. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So like when you, when COVID came out, were you in the, in Belgium at the time, or? No, um, when the first cases came out, I was in South Africa, actually, and I decided to travel. And um, the, a few days after I came to the Philippines, it, the country went on lockdown. Um, to be honest, I, I don't know. I didn't take at first COVID that it was going to be a big thing like that. So I was like, ah, oh, okay, COVID, we were hearing that. And I was like, yeah, it's okay. But when um, uh, we reached the Philippines, that's... Uh, 
when I realized, yeah, this thing is really serious and the country went on lockdown. And uh, I remember think they locked down the country for a month and I said, ah, oh, a month, that's okay. We'll just uh, work from home and be home and yeah, relax, I guess, like find a way to relax. And then two years later, so, yeah, we're still in it. So two years I guess later. That was, yeah, like, um, I, but I guess that was a bit everybody's feeling. But the impression that it gave me, um, of course, I was in touch with my friends or like family and all, ta- and all that. And I imagine that the rest of the world really like lived like the Philippines was living. So um, Philippines are really seeing now the life in Cyprus and in the Philippines. I really feel like it's really strict um, in terms of uh, the lockdown and um I was imagining the rest of the world is like that due to my experience. But when I came here, I was like, oh, not at all. People have been living with more freedom. Yeah, I think like, I I wonder if like, I think like probably the same rules for Turkey is probably maybe there too. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think they probably have similar rules. And depending on where you were in Turkey, it was kind of flexible, depending on where you were. Yeah. The, The airport was really like strict. You know, um, yeah. do you guys have like, I don't know what it's like there, but do you guys have like, you know, you're at the airport and there's like police there with like guns and stuff standing in front? Um, here, um, I don't think so. I can't remember really when I arrived, but I don't think so. Yeah. Turkey, like when you're getting off the airplane, you can see guys, they have guns outside. Oh, really? okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. They have guns. They're, they're not shooting you or something, but. Maybe they're yeah, yeah, yeah. looking for terrorists or something like this. I don't know, but I, okay. I saw. Yeah, but they, they're not doing anything. But at first, when you first see that, you're like, holy shit. <laughs> they, mm. Why do they have guns? <laughs> yeah. yeah but Probably security reasons. I think there's like, you know, there's terrorism and stuff like that, maybe from other countries, that people that come in and stuff okay. like that, and maybe different things. But I don't know. Yeah. Do you guys, is there, like, you go to malls and things like that around there. What's it like getting in malls? Do they have like security there? Is it like, are they scanning you? Like, how do you deal with COVID in big places like that there now? Honestly, most of the places, they don't really check anything. Um, some places, they will check whether you are vaccinated or if you have done a PCR test recently. Um just honestly wearing the mask uh, automatically you would wear it when you enter like a mall or anything but um i don't find it strict at all here like at all there's no curfew um yeah i i think it's quite uh flexible yeah there used to be a curfew um on that side and that was around like when i was yeah. there for like it was like there for like two weeks and after that it was off but people were still wearing the okay. mask but when you went to when you're going into like some of the malls, like there was always like guards yeah. before you go in the mall, okay. you have to give them your bag, have to give them your uh, passport and like, oh, really? yeah. And then you have to um, give them like your COVID thingy. Okay. Yeah. So they can see if you're vaccinated or not or, or whatnot. Yeah. Before you go in, they would just, you have to scan, doot, doot. you give your phone, anything you have that's metal and you walk through the scanner in Turkey. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, here they will, like big malls and so on, they will check whether you're vaccinated or have PCR, but um, if not, um, not really. Yeah, but they don't pretty much check you guys it's like for smaller like... smaller building kind of thing. Right, but there's like no scanners to walk through the mall. Like, you don't get scanned. Do, do, do. Like, or... No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think that's, that's a big difference because I think like all around Turkey, I saw that in the, all the malls that I went through from most, from mostly what I saw was that you had to walk through um, a, a, a people, they check you before you go into the mall. Yeah, that's wild. So what do you guys think right now? You guys plan on... But is it for... Is it for... Is it for what? Oh, sorry. No, what are you saying? Is it for what? Um, is it... Do you think is it, is it because of COVID or more like security reasons? I think it's for security and COVID. COVID second, security first. Yeah, that's what I would think. Because you have different yeah, people yeah, yeah. coming that's into the country. Think. No, here it's quite. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's what it's. It's not like that. That's crazy. I, I gotta go by check out Cyprus one time. I just didn't know what would be exciting about Cyprus. I think George Michael is from there. You know, George Michael. You know, he's. I think he's. His parents are from there. Yeah. So, I know. you know, you gotta have faith. 
But that's about it. I, I think that's the only yeah. thing that I noticed. Um, well, it's a nice place. I think especially, yeah. Um, I think it's a nice place, especially in summer. Like, uh, it's beautiful. Like, uh, lots of, uh, like, beaches and beautiful, uh, like, uh, blue water. Or like, in, like, uh, dream pictures and so on, I would say. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, postcards. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, I think it's a nice place to check out, yeah. Yeah, but how long can you guys stay there? Like, because I know you said you guys. Because if lockdown happens, like, what? Like, how long? How long do you normally get to, uh, allowed to stay there in uh, that place without being a citizen? Uh, um so I believe if you come to the um, Turkish side, it's one month. Uh, almost anybody can enter. Uh, there are a few nationalities that need a visa uh, in advance, but it's like three nationalities or something most of nationalities can come. Then uh, on the European, like the Greek side, I would say, uh, I believe you would need a Schengen visa. Or no, not Schengen, but a visa like um, to enter, I'm guessing like any uh, European countries. Uh, and then I guess it's three months. Um, but as we came to the North side, so we got one month and then you extend, you can do this. Uh, like if you plan to stay, you rent a house, there are, there are different ways. You can buy a house if you want to invest uh, or rent a house. And then um, I don't know the categories for buying really because us, we rent it. And then you can get a, your visa depending six months or one year, depending on how much uh, income or savings um, you have. So that, yeah. so you can pretty much... After... Oh, no, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Then after what? Sorry. No, so I was saying after six months or one year, you can basically renew. I think you have to uh, show again how much, it's all about money, yeah? uh, show again how much income and how much savings, and then they just renew your um, um, like your visa. Yeah, that's crazy. That That is wild. Mm -hmm. So you can pretty much, as long as you have, I mean, that's the thing, right? As long as you have money, you know, you can pretty much, you don't yeah. need a visa anywhere place in the world, right? Because everybody wants you if you have money, yeah. right? Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. I, yeah, I think they did this type of um, visa because the country uh, needed money. So they are looking for like travelers, or, um, digital nomads and all that to uh, come and spend their money in the country. So that's why they made it quite easy, honestly, to, um, to accept, well, to, to stay a longer time. Um, it's just all about sharing your money to be sure that you can um, sustain yourself and so on. And uh, yeah. Yeah, show me the money. I get it. Yeah, that's what they want. I get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you get so so when you're over there in this place right now, you also said that you you guys are going out there. You you know there is a startup community. Um, how are you? And and you said you, you don't yeah. speak. You said you don't speak Turkish, right? Is that correct? No, I don't. Yeah. So how are you guys communicating? Yes. No, I don't. Um, well, depending on the people, I feel the younger generation speaks some English, so you can communicate that way. Uh, now some people don't at all, but um, yeah, and there are a lot of, um, I said there are a lot of uh, international people, but all a bit from everywhere, so the, the language then will be English with them. Yeah. Wow. So, okay, so you do have some people that speak English, but if you don't, Meet yeah. people, but like how many people are mostly speaking English most of the time around there? Like, is it a lot, a lot of people speaking um, English when you go to the grocery store, when you go to different places, is everybody speaking English? Like, how are you living? Like, <laughs> um, well, if you go like grocery store and so on, it will, the English will be a bit limited, but, um, you can always try or oh, there are a lot of, uh, there is a lot of international people. So honestly, if they don't speak English themselves, they will always call their colleague who speaks English. So either that way, or there is always Google Translate. Um, I found it funny because <laughs> being in the Philippines, everybody speaks English, so it was not an issue. But here, the the people who don't speak the English, I used to be like, oh, use Google Translate. And then you type in English and it will uh, speak in uh, Turkish or something. Those, so that's a big way as well. When really the person can't, we can't communicate. Um, yeah. Uh, now I found there are many also people who have been here for a while, foreigners, and they learned uh, Turkish in the end. Right, but you don't know any Turkish right now. Me, no, no, um, no. 
you haven't learned Turkish and you're in Turkey for a month. You got to get your Turkish going on. Yeah, I should. I should indeed. Yeah, I should. You don't even know any greetings. You don't, you don't know, you don't know any words at all yet. Um, no, I don't know many words. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you guys have been there for a <laughs> month. Like, I, I don't know. I think it's just amazing that you, you guys have traveled there and you haven't actually had to actually pick up the languages at all yet so far, or even one word. And you guys are still surviving just as Google Translate. That just shows like how crazy it is in the world that you can just go to another country and use Google Translate and survive. And I think a lot of yeah. people would be scared to go to another country and think. But, yeah. Well, I think, um, well, we speak English and English is a huge um, advantage, I would say, because um, usually we'll always find someone who can speak it or at least understand you a little uh, if in, in terms to be scared. Um, to, but this thing of uh, Google Translate is really them who brought it to us. Every time I think they are used with uh, tourists who come here because it's a really touristy place, place. Sorry, So they are used to always come up, oh, use Google Translate. And it's, at first, I never really used that way. And especially in the Philippines, everybody, as I said, speak English. So you, it's very easy to communicate. Um, so yeah, it's really them, and now we we started using that method as well. But it mostly came from them at first. Um, but to be scared to travel for the language, um, I don't know. I never felt really scared for not speaking the language. You can always learn as well. Um, yeah, that's crazy. So you've traveled other countries, and you were never afraid of like, oh, if I get there. I don't know the language or I don't know the people. You were never a little bit nervous. Like this thing, you just got on the plane. You said, I don't care. I'm going. I don't care if I can speak to people. I will just figure it out. You were never a little bit nervous on that? I, mean, I would think some people. Yeah. I, no. You're different. Not at all. No. Yeah, you're different. I, I No, I, I, I don't know. People do really get scared. I never thought people would get scared about the language. Maybe if you don't speak English. I don't know. Mm. No, I mean, like, I, I feel like there's a lot of people, like, even over in, in the United States, like a lot of people, you'll talk to them from different places and, and things like that. And they'll typically say, you know, when, you, when you're when you saying, oh, yeah, well, I was in this country, or, or you tell them, like, oh, I was in this country. They're like, oh, well, how do you, does anybody, they always say, oh, do they speak English? Like, how do you, how do you do things? Like, everybody always asks this question. Oh, you're going to. Oh, you're going, you know, you tell somebody United States and they, they go, this, this, one of their friends goes to Mexico. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm afraid to go because I don't know Spanish or, oh, how do you do this? You know, so a lot of people, oh, China, like, oh, how do you like, do you went to China? Nobody speaks. Does everybody speak English? Like, oh, people ask these type of questions. So I think this is where okay. I'm coming from. Do you, does this make sense? Okay. Yeah, it, I think it totally makes sense. And when I'm, I was thinking while you were saying that it might be, um, well, America or United States, mm. um, United States, I should say, everybody mm. speaks English. Like you go from Florida, you go to California, it's English. You go to uh, Colorado, I don't know, Texas, whatever. Everybody will speak English, right? But in Europe, I live 15 minutes. My, my uh, parents' house is 15 minutes away from the Netherlands. So if I drive 15 minutes, I'm in the Netherlands where they speak Dutch. Then on the other side, I will be in Germany. Then on the south, if I cross from the south, I'll be in France. And um, so I think we are used, like Europe is smaller and a lot of languages. So we are, I, I don't know, that's what came to my mind while you were speaking, maybe from a European uh, perspective. We are used to bump into people, if you travel a bit, who are not speaking um, your language. And um, in Europe, I think English, not a I don't think a lot of people speak English. Maybe in the, like countries like Netherlands, everybody speaks it. Uh, Germany, I'm not sure. But like France, I don't think many people speak it. Belgium, um, the Dutch speaking side, they do. The French speaking side, no. Uh, so Belgium, for example, we are a very small country. We have three languages. Mm. So I might go to the north part of Belgium. And uh, the post, if I do then speak English, I only speak French. They don't, they only speak Dutch. Well, we have a problem. We can't communicate, for example. So maybe the fear um, is not there because of uh, being used of um, those type of environment where you bumped easily into someone who will not speak your mother tongue. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's why I would see it compared to the United States, maybe. 
No, I think that makes sense. I think that I think it makes sense that people who live within certain, you know, radius of, you know, other people who, you know, speak a different tongue are not as nervous. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a, yeah, I think that's a different variation because of Europe. I mean, people in the United States are always, and especially in big cities, are used to, you know, running into people who speak different languages. But still, overwhelmingly, yeah, okay. mostly everybody speaks English um, overwhelmingly. Yeah. So most of the people, it doesn't yeah. matter if there's a bunch of people who speak, you know, Spanish or a bunch of people who speak, you know, uh, Mandarin, you know, they don't, it's overwhelm Overall, mostly everybody still speaks English, you know. So yeah, I think that's right. mostly what yeah. most people care about. I mean, but you can go to Miami and you can find a lot of people who don't speak English. True. Miami has a True. lot of people that don't speak English for sure. <laughs> so yeah. You, yeah. i've had friends that they'll usually get they'll ask me they'll say oh you know i don't want to go i'm scared to go to miami i have some friends here that you know they're like oh i'm scared to go to miami because i don't speak spanish you know I, 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 if i go with you you know will you will you translate or something like this i'm like no nah, man yeah. it's cool i said there's people that speak english you know just some people don't want to <laughs> You know, some people don't want to because it's like, you know, you're in Miami, you speak Spanish or, you know, it's just like, what are you, who are you, where are you from? So most of the people there are Spanish speakers. So you do run yeah. across that more. I mean, that's changed a little bit, a little bit more probably recently with the whole tech COVID thing. So a lot of techies yeah. have moved from Silicon Valley over to Miami. So you see a lot more people there. Um, but overall, yeah. most of the places, everybody's speaking Spanish. And I haven't had some of my Russian friends came visit me. And they met me in Miami and we hang out. They didn't have a problem, but also there's a Russian side in Miami. So, you okay. know, they can hang there and they just don't really care. They travel yeah. around, but see, maybe that's the same thing for them too. Maybe there's so much within proximity for them near where they yeah. are that they don't really care because they go to all kinds of countries all the time and they just go from country to country all the time. I don't know. That's yeah. just what maybe. they do. Maybe. But I think I think yeah. that that that's different. I think that is a big difference. I think that you see for you or Europe versus yeah. you, America. America is so spread out, but it also has yeah. mostly everybody speaking English. Yeah, and yeah, the official language would be English, while Europe official like Belgium official language, there's no English. Like besides the UK. That's the only country. Well, they are not really um, European Union, but um, not anymore, right? <laughs> that's the only country where the official language is English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The official language is uh, English, but the rest is we all have our um, own languages. So, yeah. But maybe I would say um, I could see that some of the people I know from Europe, friends or what, they might be scared because they don't speak English. So I have the advantage maybe that I speak English also. So um, let's say you go to Asia, many Asian countries that speak English or um, I don't know. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You're totally right. I mean, that that's it. I don't know. But I, I have a I had a friend, a childhood friend who literally um, he moved to the Netherlands. Um, I don't know. He met yeah. somebody or something there and he got married to someone there and she was like a nurse. And during COVID, she died. And uh, yeah, it was like pretty sad. So he moved back, and oh, wow. okay. yeah, so he had to deal with her legal stuff there, and he moved back. But that was crazy. I was like, man, this guy just got married. Okay. He was only married for like five years, and then literally, she just died. Yeah. She was helping out people in in the hospital, and she died. She was so young. I was like, what? Are you, what? How bad is COVID in Netherlands? <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because COVID is COVID is actually bad in some places. United States, I would say, you know, it, it's hit or miss. Depends on where you're at, but I think we're being stricter here yeah. than we were previously. So making sure our borders are a little bit locked down so we don't get the whole virus. But we already got it over here already, so it's kind of hard to stop it. I mean, COVID's COVID's not going anywhere. I don't think these this situation no. is going to change anytime soon. Um, you, you just got to take your mm -hmm. your vitamins. Take care of your health. Make sure you guys are exercising. Yeah, I mean, Don't get too stressed out there because, you know, that makes your, no, your immune I mean, system weak. And I think that's pretty much all you can do. Yeah. But so what's going on? So for you right now, you have the company, um, yeah. the lead generation yeah. company. And yeah, where do you – have you thought about where do you, where do you see yourself probably within the uh, at least a year? Because I know you said five years you don't want to think about. But have you thought about what is your year goal with the company right now? 
Um, so for now, um, I would like to stay here for a bit because we just arrived. Um, then maybe uh, moving to Europe, that would be uh, something I would be looking forward to. Um, so you want to yeah. move back? Not to Belgium. That No, uh, the weather is too bad there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, probably a European country more uh, sunny. I'm not, I'm not sure which one exactly. I would have to uh, to think more. But for now, to stay here um, for at least a year, um, and then uh, probably move back to Europe, but uh, not Belgium. <laughs> right, and not Belgium because it's cold. Yeah. It's too it's too cold. Yeah, it's too cold and gray and rainy. You know, I, mm, I it makes you depressed. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. Like, yeah, you know, like you barely see the sun. I can't. Were you and your partner were you guys both from there? Um, no. So my partner is uh, Ugandan. Oh, so your partner's from Uganda, and yes, did you guys meet in Uganda? Yes, we did. Whoa, that's crazy. So you guys, so you went. Oh, maybe you're going, were you going there because it was, it was, you went there because of work or something, but did you also go because it was hot? <laughs> um, well, at that time, not because it was hot, but at that time I wanted to move out of Europe. I wanted to see, um, well, if I have to give the whole story. So when I was 18, I finished high school in Belgium and then I did one year um, of high school in Florida, actually. Um, that's where I learned English. Wow. Um, like, to be able to, to talk uh, like daily basis. And then uh, I Amazing. went back, I went to the Netherlands doing my studies. Uh, but then I wanted to, uh, after that, I wanted to leave Europe. I wanted to see what's out there and um, yeah, have more experience about the world. So uh, I applied for different jobs and I got the one in Uganda and that's why I decided to move there. That's wild. That's crazy. Yeah. And you miss your family, right? Cause like, yeah. how does that work? Cause you're like always going to different places. Your family's still back there in Belgium. Like, how does that work? Like, is that like, what's, yeah. how, what's your plan? Yeah. Um, so, well, I wanted to be close to Belgium. So they are going to come uh, visit me soon actually. And then I plan to uh, go back sometimes and come back here. Yeah. 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 Is that what they say? Like in Belgium? Yeah. 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 Uh, in well, depends in which yeah, language yeah, I, say, yeah. I guess. In terms of the read. Yeah, in yeah, words. yeah. I think you, uh, there's like a uh, they always. I think like they they used to make like like kind of like jokes, kind of like sometimes they would say like Polish would say like yeah, 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 like that. So it's yeah. Like, do they do that? that? That's I don't know. in Dutch. Is it Dutch? Okay, cool. Yeah, that's that is hilarious. Yeah. It sounds cool though, because like you you used to people here usually saying like yeah, but not ya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but people say yeah i wonder if it sounds but yeah means uh means yes in uh dutch mm. yeah yeah i mean it's, yeah, yeah i know but i'm just saying like it's pronounced the way you guys are pronouncing like we just say like people oh, okay. say yeah and you guys sing yeah yeah and yeah it, or at least it sounds like you're saying yeah maybe you're saying yeah but it sounds like yeah oh who me yeah yeah Oh really? Okay, no, um, because in French it's we, oui, so completely different. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I'm saying it sounds like you're saying like "ya" yeah still means yes, right? Okay. But we yes, yes. But when we say, but we say, we will say instead of saying "ya," yeah, we'll say "ye," yeah, "yeah," yeah, like "yeah." Correct. But you're saying, but you guys say "ya," yeah, and we say well, yeah. not yeah. me, the Dutch people. Oh, the Dutch people, people do. Ah. Yeah. But it sounds like you're saying "ya." Yeah. Um, Oh, really? Okay, yeah, then yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought that was cool. I was like, she keeps on saying like, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that's cool. Okay. That, cause I, and, and you know, that's weird when you're, when you're, when you're dealing with people with different, um, uh, backgrounds, you know, and accents, and sometimes they, they say words. So you, you hear some variants and your mind kind of tries to, mm -hmm. you know, it tries to think, okay, yeah. Okay. Does it mean? Yeah. Or is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She means, yeah, obviously. She means yes, yes, yeah, yeah, okay. It's the same thing, but yeah. it's weird. Your mind tries to, I don't know, figure out or detect the word or try to um, correct it or think, okay, was it? are they saying yes. it the right way? But really, there is no, there's technically, it's the right way for the accent for where you're from as that's how right, people yeah, are saying it. Indeed. Yeah, but that's always interesting though when you're not in that 
background or language you're like listening and you're you're hearing people talking you're like wait a minute that you want to correct the word and it's like it's not really about correcting it because it's correct where you are but the way we say it it's not that way so we hear it as like oh wait let me change that and it's like no she's saying it right for where she's from yeah so. depends depends on the accent i guess yeah, it totally depends on the accent, depends on where you're at, you know, and I think that's what's cool. But, you know, when you're hearing different things, but even if you speak any different language, some people will say certain words and pronounce it different depending on where you are in the location. Like, you know, even people that are speaking Turkish, there are other countries that speak Turkish, but they pronounce some of the words differently. And so when a Turkish yes. person hears a word that is they're like, are they saying this word? I kind of understand. But why are they saying it this way? But it's exactly that it's normal to them, but the dialect is just different, right? Yeah, it makes me think of, um, you know, when I, I was in the Philippines, there are many people working as a um, teacher, like English teacher, because many um, like Korea or China, they are looking for uh, English teachers. And they mainly always look for um, na like um, US native, South African or UK. But there are so many other um, English-speaking countries where the official language is English, like Philippines is one, or the East African countries, the, in one of the, the official languages are English. So they actually learn um, English. In they are taught in English, like in primary, in kindergarten, or in high school, they are taught in English. Like, for example, in Uganda, everybody is taught in English. Wow. But still, it's not recognized as them being native speakers. Mm. If you know. Yeah, I know. They are. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. You're saying because, it, but are they native speakers though? Even if they learn it, you're not really, I don't know, that's tricky. Oh. Okay, okay maybe if, if, if we see native speakers as um, the, the language you speak um, at home, I, I don't know what would be the exact definition about that, but um, I think it's quite difficult, but I would see, like in the US, for example, there are people who, um, like like you said, in Miami, there are lots of people who speak Spanish, but maybe they speak Spanish at home, but when they go to school, they learn English and they will have the American English accent. So they'll be considered as native speaker. But like in countries like Kenya or Uganda or um, I don't know Tanzania, for example, wow. they will learn English in school, but maybe speak the dialect or their um, um, their language, like uh, yeah, dialect. Let's call it uh, at home. But still, they will learn. Okay, they won't have the American accent because they will be taught by people who have um, like a Ugandan English accent, if we say, for example. But still, to me, they are, well, not to me. I think they are like native speakers as well. Because they'll, yeah. but it's just the accent will be different. Right. Because they don't learn in the US or they don't learn in the UK, but still. Or like in the Philippines, they learn in English as well. So, and if you meet any Filipino person, they speak English. Right. But now they have their own accent of English. No, no. I just, so, so I always found it funny when, um, well, it's because they want to have, um, I, I don't know, it's kind of this um, supremacy. And, uh, <laughs> supremacy and it is, I think it is, and uh, that we don't recognize um, non-American or non-English um, um, from the UK or South Africa is okay, still recognized. But though, if you listen to a South African speaking English, they have their own accent. Yeah, you, different we, from UK and different from USA. What you said, South Africa? Yeah, South Africa. Yeah, that's right. They do. Yeah, I mean, Elon Musk is from South Africa. He speaks English pretty well, but he also lived in Canada and the United States for a while. So, yeah, I think. You know, I've also heard like too as well, like in some of those language, because one of my friends used to own a, a language uh, school and yeah. he would, he would, he would, you know, uh, do it online and stuff like that and hire people from overseas and stuff like that and teach them English. He had like a, a website that he did that with. Yeah. And he, um, you know, he used to, you know, make some decent money off of that. But 
Um, I've also heard, and I also was looking online and stuff, and I heard that like they also. So what you were kind of saying is that they also yeah. not even just like looking for UK speaking English or um, you know American English. They also are looking for a person who looks like they're European um, who's speaking English. You know, not just like okay. any English speaker. You know, I heard yeah. like I don't know about Philippines, but Korea. I've heard like that Korea was like that. They were looking for in China, maybe yeah. they were looking for a person who looks like uh, some uh, Greek god or Viking looking person to speak English. <laughs> yeah, look like a white, like okay. look like European white, like okay. this speaking okay. English more okay. than anybody else. So if someone's looking like a Spanish speaker and he speak English. I've heard that you know they're not looking. Sometimes they didn't get the jobs, even if they were born in America. Yeah, that's, very huh? that's very bad. Yeah, I've that's heard. That's very bad. I've heard that in um like Korea, and I've heard like that. You know, some of the, I've 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 done like I've watched like some of the online things and like people okay. saying like on YouTube like oh studying a I mean I'm I living abroad in in Korea or China sometimes and you know when I'm trying to get English speaking uh, jobs it's harder for people who don't look like european um and speak oh yeah English. yeah i heard that one too yeah like this like the parents and stuff would not want them to do that oh you're not yeah i heard like, that also for teaching in uh schools like primary schools you yes know? um i heard it's easier if you are white mm -hmm. yeah yeah which is, is which is yeah. which is weird because there's there's i mean there are like i think in the united states there are certain people in areas have a certain dialect based on f of like where they grew up at and sometimes what they look yeah. like but mostly everybody who's you know if you have like you've most likely worked in a standardized company or a standardized place or you speak you know modern english like you know that can be translated as proper around any place i don't think that matters and also yeah. you, uh, uh european or sorry uh english uk english is different from american english totally like, mm -hmm, you know, we, we don't speak the actual same, you know, accent. And even in the United States, we don't speak the accent. Like you can have somebody from uh, like the South, you know, yeah. in the United States. Oh, you've lived close to there. So, yeah. But, you know, somebody somebody's talking like this. Is this proper English? You know, mm -hmm. I, do you think that's good to talk like that? You know, that might be not good English down here. You know, is that, is that yeah. good English? <laughs> Is that the English they want to learn? But as long as they look a certain way, that I guess they might be ignorant to it. Or I don't know. I don't, I've never dealt with anybody who has, who, has, who has had to do that. But I'm guessing, you know, that doesn't matter. It's more about do you look like an original person to them that they think when they think of English, that's what that person yeah. should look like. You know, it's yeah. it's kind of like colonization or weird stuff like that. But I've heard they have that stuff in certain areas around there. It's just weird like that. They have like weird little superstitions. Like you, you don't need to go outside in the sun because you'll get tan and, you know, they need to put lots of sunscreen and, you know, and it's like, it's totally opposite because Europeans will just, Hey, let's go out in the sun, get tan. Yeah. Let's get brown. <laughs> right. But you know, they're like, nah, we have to stay away from the sun. We need to look like European. It's funny. Ah, okay. You mean in that way they want to stay white? Yeah. Like European, us Europeans, we want to to get brown. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's. it's <laughs> yeah. They're like, no, no, no. They, I think that I think it has to do with colonization in some sense. I think that they think that I think that they think in their minds that Europeans are the top in the world or just like you know they're thinking of supremacy. I think some people are thinking this, yeah. and they were taught this from their parents' parents. And through, yeah. through people who colonized those areas before, and they teach them this. And so they believe this stuff now from their parents. And so now I think what ends up happening is they're like, oh, well, you know what? You know, European people don't want to get dark, you know, because they're remembering stuff from 100 years ago, you know, uh, <laughs> during the time where. Yeah, I think I believe, yeah. Yeah. You remember that time, like in Europe, like there was a long time ago, like in England, where you didn't go outside because you considered poor. So I think that they yeah. they're still stuck with that same mentality in a lot of places in Asia where they're just like, oh, we don't want to go outside because, you know, we need to stay light. And so anything like they even like, I think there was like commercials of like there was one African guy and they threw in the one. I think it was maybe a Korean commercial or Chinese commercial. I don't remember. I don't want to misquote it. But there was a commercial somewhere in Asia where 
there was an African guy and they throw him in like the, the maybe it was like uh, the, the, the washing machine. And then he, he, he comes out and he's white. And uh, like, I think I heard that yeah. <laughs> I think I heard that story, but yeah, those are, it's so wrong. Those are hilarious. Those are you gotta laugh at those things. Those things are so silly. It's like who the fuck is thinking of that shit? Like, are you serious? Like, especially if you don't even look like that. If you don't even look like that, why would you? It's weird, but it's amazing. I think that has to do with like colonization. I think people still have this men mentality some in some remote places or non-remote places. I guess I don't think they've changed it. Well. I I don't think it's only remote, to be honest. No, no, I, I agree. It's, this piece of, of white supremacy, it's still there and very much there. And I I don't know, sometimes I'm very amazed by what I hear or see. And it's like this thing of, um, well, if we take an example now with the new um, variant, many African countries are banned from um, going um, to Europe and so on. Because, like South Africa in particular, because they are the one who discovered the variant. So now they are banned, but the variant was already in Europe before they discovered it. Right. Like there are many, I think, I don't think it's remote places. I think um, this whole idea of um, like black people, black or darker colors are below white people is still very much there. And it's this yeah white supremacy yeah bullshit. no 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 i i, I me, agree yeah. i agree with you i think it still yeah. does exist to some people in in some in, in some perspectives and i also i i believe and i know that it, like it, it it's even in the tech space and it's in all industries i mean if you think about some of the people who are building yeah. some companies and they're going to raise capital you know you have to get somebody to believe in your your idea and what people typically do is yeah. they will believe in what they believe is smart enough or better and things like that. And I think the thing about white supremacy, if you will, is the, 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 I would say probably the most smartest thing about white supremacy, if you will, if, if there's even a smartest thing, but the most bad or evil thing that is a part of it is morally that, you know, going around, you know, yeah. some ancestors going around teaching people that, you know, Hey, anything dark is bad. Anything light like me is good. And when you do that type of thing, you know, you start teaching the world these negative things that they never thought about. But you go to different countries, you get on a boat and you travel there. So, oh, if you see people like this, uh, they're not as good. Or, you know, oh, anybody who doesn't look closer to me is bad. And if you look most like me, then you're good. And I think it's I think from a strategic point, why these. Oh, what are you going to say? Can you hear me? No, no, I'm listening. Oh yeah, so I think from a start, I think from a strategic point, it, yes, yes, I can. it makes sense on why I think they needed to do that during those times. I think you know, four or five hundred years ago, they needed to do that because when they went to new places and there was only like five or a hundred people, they need to, you know, be protective. So if they tell the people, "Oh, we are strong, we are God, we are good, we are better." And, you know, that way they won't attack them and all come, you know, try to go against them. It maybe was a, 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 a protective mechanism to start teaching these things, you know, because if everybody thought that if everybody ganged up at the same time and said, OK, well, let's attack these people and get them out of our country, then they would lose. But the better way to trick them is to say, oh, no, we are like God and we are stronger. And if you look like us, we're better. And you the ones that are darker here are not good and the ones that are lighter like closer to us is better so when you go to places teaching people these things the the place can be divided and they won't attack you yeah it's so yeah. just go to different it's countries and do the same thing over and over again it's called colonialism it's easy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but I, I i think it's sad though that people do that um I, I mean, I would say in the United States, we have things like that. It's not as crazy like that, but we do have stuff like that. I think anywhere around the world, you have certain things like that. And even inside of countries with the same people, you have yeah. some things like this, whether it's the language, the religion, it's all kinds of stuff. But I would say, you, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you see it too much in the Middle East, though, to be honest. With you. In Spanish speaking countries, you don't see it too much, but it, it does exist. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That, that is crazy. But in, in your is your boyfriend's or yeah partner is like native Ugandan, right? Or just yes, like he yes. moved there. Ah, 
Okay, does he have a different mm -hmm. color than you? Yeah, he's black. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, yeah, I mean, did you ever, like, there in Uganda, were, like, the people there different, treating you different because your skin is lighter or what? Or did you feel any type of racism well, there or, any, like, that type of stuff? Well, there's no racism towards white people because we are not a minority. So we can't be, there can be discrimination, but not racism. Ah, yes, I got you, Sam. I got you, I got you. Yeah. So there is sometimes in terms of um, if, well, they think you have money. Um, automatically, if you're white, you have money. And uh, <laughs> if, I don't know, you, you want to buy something um, in the street or get uh, local transport, for example, they will try to get more money from you and double up the price. Or, uh, so you better know the local prices. Um, but though um, I spoke to some um, people who are from uh, African origin, but moved to Europe when they were young and then went back to live um, in uh, different African countries. Right. And they would say, so they look exactly as the um, Native. fellow people. Right. Yeah. But then um, because they have a different accent, or uh, um, they would say, my people can see I am not from here anymore. Right. So they will cheat them as well. Ah, like, because they know they come from Europe or foreign. US, right. and so they think okay, they have money now because they come from that. Um, what what is funny? What I heard about um, like this side of uh, Cyprus, the Turkish side, is that um, that I might not get um, cheated here because I look like a Turkish. I have Italian origins, might be coming from that. Ah, so they makes often sense they now. think makes I am sense. Turkish. They often think they speak to me directly in Turkish. Or if I come to them and speak English, they'll be like, oh, do you speak Turkish? And I'm like, no, no, no. Because they would often think I am from Turkey. So I might not get cheated, but he might get cheated because they directly see he's a foreigner. So he has money because he came here and so on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, when I was in Turkey, they were just yelling at me, Migo, 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 where are you from, Migo? I was like, uh, Migo, born in the United States. <laughs> 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 but that was only some places, like, but like certain places, like where it was like more tourist areas, but other places, yeah. nobody, nobody said anything, nobody noticed anything. Um, ex but when I went like really near the border near Syria, and um, yeah. near Martin, like one guy was at gas station. He's like, "Oh, where are you from?" I was like, "Yeah, from the United States." He's <laughs> like, "Oh, okay." He just was like, "Wow, cool." I never meet somebody from not this area, but like mostly all the Turkey, um, nothing I noticed anything. No, everybody was people were just yelling at me in Turkish, and I was like, "Ah, uh, merhaba, tamam tamam." I, I, is is Turkish? Yeah, Turkish yeah. is 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 small. You know, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I understand enough to, you know, to get around um, and yeah. have small conversations, but not enough to just like talk all day. And sometimes it gets tiring yeah. because you're thinking yeah. of the words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're like, oh, fuck, I'm tired. So like a full day of yeah. talking to people who don't speak any English makes me tired. So when you're hanging out with Turkish friends and stuff like that, if they don't speak English that well, so there's people that speak English. But when you're hanging around the ones that don't speak English that well. You're probably tired yeah. because you're thinking of the word to say to them in Turkish because you're not yeah. using that muscle all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. So this is something that I did experience um, there. But overall, I think it's a really nice people's culture, things like this. Um, mm -hmm. Really nice place. But I, I could see how you probably might have those problems. Like, I think it was interesting that you mentioned, like, you and your partner just having these weird variant situations both humans yeah. you know and then also the fact that you're a man and he's a woman those things also add into it like how people are going to treat you so it's like two weird things that you wouldn't think about of how people would yeah. react to you but people do you know people will react to you totally different and i think yeah. i think universally even if you are from that country originally if people can tell that you're not yeah. native they don't care they're like oh you're you're a foreigner so it doesn't matter they yeah, do think yeah. you got money yeah. they want to rip oh they'll ask you typically what i've always learned is when people ask you oh where are you from you just need to tell them oh yeah i'm from here or i live yeah. here but i know this place and i've been here for a long time so i'm good you know yeah. you tell them this they're like okay i won't fuck with you you know it's 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 or showing um 
like you said, to know a few words in the language. local language can help a lot because it will show, oh, okay, that person has been here because he knows a bit, still know that you're a foreigner, but oh, it's been here for a while because he knows some few words or something. Right, because they know that you're familiar at least with the culture, so they're not they're not going to be yeah. easy to try to trick you as much because they think yeah, you might right. figure out stuff. You're yeah. right, 100%, because I noticed that. I think it's kind of almost like when you go to a mechanic, probably, I don't know if you go to a mechanic, but it, you know, you're traveling, but when you go to a mechanic, you know, and when you're dealing with them and they're like, Hey, look, you know, um, my car is not working. Right. And then you show yeah. them your car and then they're like, you know, um, yeah, if you look like you've never worked in, if um, you don't know anything about cars or you're look like you have money, they're going to say, Oh, you know what? Whew, this is, Oh, I think this is broken. This is not working right. This is, this is, you know, yeah. we, need, we need to charge you more. I think it's going to cost a lot of money. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 How long do you have? You know, you need to get another car right now so I can take a while to fix. It's going to be a lot of work. But I've noticed when you go in there and you say, because I worked at like a, a shop before, right when I turned 18, I was like, oh, I need to learn about cars so I can be a guy. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And I went there and I learned stuff about cars, but I did it for a reason too, because when I wanted to go to a mechanic shop, because I heard one guy, I was taking a class in high school. He said, we were in a uh, painting car class, right, for six months. And he said, you know, when he grows up, he's going to look for women and guys with suits, people who have money, and he's going to fuck them over. And okay. uh, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need to learn that. I don't want to be like that. I was like, good thing I'm in these classes. I said, so when I get out of school, I'm just going to take a job. So I saw a job there. I was like, oh, yeah, I want to take this job. I don't know anything. Do you know this? No. No, I don't know anything, but I want to work here really bad. So I got it and I just wanted to learn about cars so I could go to, if I ever had to go to a mechanic and they asked me a question, I knew what I was already talking about. So now what I do is when I go into the shops, they'll walk over to me and say, hey, sir, how are you doing? You know, what's your name? Okay, yeah. So, how? yeah, let me take a look at your car. So I see right here in your car, they did this and they did that and there's some problems here. I was like, oh, listen, man. That's cool, man. Like, how long you work here, man? I used to do this, too. I worked here at this place. And, you know, sometimes I, I used to bring the jacket, my uh, mm -hmm. old jacket. And they're like, they would they would not even come to me and say the same things immediately. They would say, oh, where do you work? I was like, uh, yeah, we're, you know, I was like, no, nah, I used to work here, but I still have the jacket. And they will talk totally different towards you. But yeah. now I don't mm -hmm. even do that anymore. I would just literally, I will literally walk in and say, Okay, so I know how this works. This is, I will mention like the components of the car or I will explain to them the problem of the car. You know, I will say, you know, I think it's the head gasket. When I'm, when I'm driving the car, I hear the, the rods knocking. I hear, duh, 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 duh. so to me, I think the head needs to be changed or, you know, you, you definitely want to check the spark plugs. The spark plugs look like they need an actual um, uh, change. So I think I need a tune up. Um, they haven't been done in a while. Um, you know, I walk in. Oh, you know what? I think that, that there's a problem with the coolant. There's some issues with the coolant. You might want to check the fan or check the coolant. I looked at the hose. I will just go in and just say something really fast like that so they know, hey, we're not going to fuck this guy over. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah. I've had a couple of times, though, Laura, where they've tried to still try to say, oh, what, what, how, did you think this? I was like, nah, it's this. And they're like, okay. All right. Sorry, man. Yeah, yeah. We'll get you out of here. They just want to get me out fast and they pay, they will charge me the least because they know yeah. that I know what the, f they know that I know what I'm talking about. So they're not trying to screw me. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I think the same thing happens when you go to different countries and you're not yeah. a native person. People see a dollar sign on your head. So you're like walking around, you have money. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, that's Laura, the girl with the cash. So I don't know. I think it's different. I think it's good to travel around countries. I think it's mm -hmm. great to see different people. I think it's cool that you're learning about different things. I think it's a great journey. I think, you know, while you're building your company, it's a useful thing. You definitely yeah. want to continue to do that and grow as a person. I think it's going to really help you out on your trajectory to also, you know, build um, a great lead generation company. I don't see that as being a bad thing. A lot of people who've traveled around the world and, you know, experienced different cultures started a lot of amazing companies. There was the guys who created, you know, um, Uber and Lyft. These people traveled to different countries and they saw these things and they said, oh, wait, you know, what if we put technology on that and 
give everybody mm -hmm. this app and then they can drive their cars and they created these companies. So it, it, even like Airbnb, they, these guys traveled in other places and they were like, Hey, why don't we just like make an app for that? And this yeah. is how great mm -hmm. ideas happen. So I think you, I think you could do something awesome if you just keep on exploring or just with even this company, you just never know. You just got to keep on knocking. It's hard. I get it. You're, you're solo, you're a solo founder. It's not easy. It's probably pretty stressful. Um, and your is your partner in tech too, or in company similar industry or no? Oh, no, no, not similar. So it's totally different. Yeah. Oh man. So you get like, so you, how do you, how do you get out of that? Like, how do you express when you're having a headache? Like, do they understand like uh, what you're going through? You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. we understand each other and we try to help each other, but yeah, not the same uh, field. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying it gets kind of difficult. Cause like, sometimes you want to say, oh, fuck excuse me, this person doesn't, you know, do this, or this is not working, or I need you to do this. And it's like, you can kind of understand, but if you're not in it, it's kind of sometimes different to express. Like for me, I've seen like, sometimes when I'm talking yeah. about, if I'm talking to somebody about a podcast, they might understand, but if they don't do it, yeah. it's yeah, okay. different. So usually when I'm talking to somebody who understands podcasting, I typically can't wait to speak to somebody who's you know, working on a podcast because I'm like, oh, I can yeah. finally express myself because some <laughs> words don't translate. You know, some of the stress doesn't translate. You're like, fuck, oh, yeah. this is like, <laughs> yeah, it, it is, is that way. Yeah. Like literally like this last night, I literally stayed up really late and I was like, oh, I scheduled this with Laura. I need to get here and, and, and do this. Uh, I, I was like, but you know what? I was thinking, I was like, I'm so tired. I don't know if I can make it. I'm so tired. I stayed up all night researching some stuff and uploading videos. I said, maybe I should uh, say, you know, um, maybe tomorrow. Can we reschedule? Because I'm so tired. But then I was like, you know what? I don't like when people um, change appointments. You know, I'm, I'm funny like that. So I always think like, oh, fuck. What do I like? You know, so even if I, you know, unless yeah. I'm like feeling really bad or sick or have COVID, I try to make sure that mm -hmm. I keep it you know, maintain those relationships with any person who comes on the show to keep it professional and just as really just my code of ethics. Yeah. So that is what it was. So I did that and, you know, I had my energy drink and, you know, mm -hmm. um, I survived. I, you, I will survive like a 70s song, but um, yeah, I mean, it's great having you on the actual show. Um, what's next for you? Is there any links or anything that people can reach out to you with or, you know, anything that you might want to let the audience know about what you're doing? Um, sure. So, uh, well, to reach out to me, um, our website is zenoutreach.io. Uh, we can be found also on uh, Facebook and all that, uh, Zen Outreach, same, same way. Um, I think the best is to look on the website. There are all the links and um, emails as well. We have a chat if you need it. Um, yeah, that's how they can reach out to me the best. Awesome. Amazing. And is, and, and do you have, are you going like on a podcasting tour or are you just like trying to get the word out? Like, what is your goal right now? Um, so in terms of podcast, I try to do, uh, some once in a while because it's, um, good advertising and it's also an interesting experience, um, to, uh, talk to the, to different people. And, uh, also it's the subjects are quite different and, um, I like that. Um, I'm not going on a tour. I try to do it uh, once in a while. Um, yeah. Yeah. Some people just go on a tour. I've, I've met some people like, yeah, I'm going on. I'm like, okay. that has to be a lot of work. Uh, but uh, yeah. I think it's great for your business when you're trying to go around and learn. And you can also pick different things out of people's minds. And maybe mm -hmm. you can express something that you may have not figured out, especially if they have some type of background with it. Like for me, for example, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, when it comes to like email structure, and, you know, making yeah. the email more, you know, efficient when you need to get people to, you know, uh, reply or to come on your show mm -hmm. or things like that. It's really important. And even me, I've done it before and it's still like a headache. And I agree with you. Sometimes you do want to probably just like outsource those. I think for podcasters, yep. I think our biggest thing is like when it comes to like, let's say booking guests, sometimes it's mundane. Okay. You know, it's a headache. Like sometimes you're, I don't feel like yeah. doing that. Or, you know, or, or let's say, um, looking for advertisers, um, yeah. those are probably the high priority, biggest pains, I think for podcasters. So we have some of those overlaps and probably a lot of businesses do, but I think podcasters, 
And I think it's a growing thing right now. And so I think like a lot of people don't have those things too as well. I just stole it. Yeah. I gave you like a business idea if you're already doing that as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, this is what I'm just saying. So yeah, it's great having you actually on the show. Um, maybe we'll invite you again in the future. Surely, you know, we'd love to have you back. Um, I, you know, you know, would, would, I'm pretty sure the audience wants to hear, you know, what's your next journey? Where have you guys been? And, you know, I don't know. You, maybe it's a YouTube uh uh, blog or something. I don't know, but, um, yeah, your journey, you know, um, uh, yeah, it's great to have you on the show and just hang on for a second. Um, I just need to make sure that we're uploaded and everything is good and okay. I've got you locked in. So thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for having me as well. Awesome. So it was a pleasure. Awesome. Awesome. So just hang on. Now we got to wait for the fun part. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kids in the Room podcast. The Kids in the Room podcast. That's right. That's right. Brought to you by Move Faces TV. Let's, Let's go. go.